All right, and we're live. Lady Ada, what is this? Hello, and welcome to our weekly show and tell. This is your time to shine your LEDs in our face. Show us your cool projects, your robotics, your Raspberry Pis, your Arduinos, your crafting, your maker spaces, your memorabilia from Radio Shack's gone by. Anything goes for the next, oh, 20 minutes or so. we got to get out of here at 7.55, so please give us some time to set up for the next show. We're going to start off with Tony D. Tony D, kick it off. Hey, yeah, so I've just got a follow-up from last week. I was showing uh, running processing on the Raspberry Pi, and it's you know a good way to use the kind of creative coding environment, easy way to get into programming. Uh, and I'll show a neat thing. It's a new feature in the latest version of processing. You can actually control the hardware pins on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so right here I've got just a little 3D printed case with uh, the Pi and the Pi TFT, and then a couple LEDs and a button over here, and the exposure is down just so you can actually see the LCD. Uh, and there's a couple squares on here, and when I press the square on here, it lights up the red LED, and then there's a green one over here. So it's kind of neat. It's um, basically just controlling these LEDs using uh, the new API that processing has to talk to hardware. It's really similar to the Arduino API, so the wiring uh, protocol. And you can read inputs also, so when I press this, uh, the screen turns blue behind here. So it's a cool way to kind of get started and, and you know if you have a processing sketch already you can take it and then add some interactivity to it, add some buttons and stuff like that for it. Uh, the big thing is that the Pi is not as fast as your computer so you just have to realize you know a really advanced sketch that does like 3D stuff might not really run well but real simple stuff or like even like prototyping I think it'd be neat you know you could build like a menu system and prototype a little hardware device with this. So I cool thing. Like um, it's a, you know the Pi TFT worked on it um, natively, which is really cool, because it just goes through X11, and it's a it's it's a very for a lot of people who know processing is a very fast way to do user interface design project. A project like this, like you don't need even know Python. You can just use very simple processing sketches. Exactly. And yeah, I think it's really neat. It's a little bit above scratch, but I think it, it has a lot more power. And a lot of students know processing; um, they learn it in school. Yeah, and the latest version, definitely check it out. There's all kinds of new features. Uh, go to their website, processing.org, I think. And they've got a little video that runs through it. Really cool stuff in it. So okay, check it out. that's cool. And what examples do they ship with? Uh, oh, they've got a ton. There's like you know, well, easily over a hundred. And it's everything from like drawing text to doing fancy cellular automata and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty co uh, comprehensive. Cool. All, All right. right. Well, thank awesome. you so much, Tony. Always jumping in and trying out the first new things and showing and sharing. Thank you. What's up, Noam Pedro? What you got? Printing this week. Hey, what's hey up, everybody? This week we have something pretty simple. Last week, Pedro put together an enclosure for the Pi camera, so I thought I'd make a companion to it. A couple sticks, then make up a tripod. It's using a couple hardware screws and the little bits, the little photography video bits that we have in the shop. So we've got the D ring and the little socket ball head and some Ninja Flex for the rubber feet. So it's just a really simple, generic kind of tripod for your Raspberry Pi camera. So yeah, that's pretty much it this week. We also have some uh, some updates. Uh, the printer bot, check it out. Oh no, it is a strong machine. Just that thing the scenes while we're filming. That thing is so strong. It was printing when it hit the floor, and it continued to print. It kept printing. It just oh, kept printing. So I recommend the printer bot. It is such a such a strong little machine. So <laughs> it'll it'll take a beating. Nothing bent. Our floor tile is still oh. completely intact. So. Just a little update. Um, you might want to. We might want to make some rubber feet like for this tripod with the printer bot. So I that's, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I like how, for a it. second, I thought that was live, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And then I realized. It was <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's watch it one more time. There we go. Replay. Oh no! No. It took the whole thing with it. I, I know like it's hilarious. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> quite a few belly laughs. Our, our sides are still hurting. So. It's well, all good, though. Anything 3D printed, you can just fix by printing another one. All there right. You go. All right, guys. Thank you. Okay, and what's the um, video that's um, coming out tomorrow? Tomorrow we're doing a Q&A, 3D printing Q&A, just a couple of uh, some common questions that we get asked a lot. Yeah, I think you're going to play the video, tune in to see what our very first 3D print was and uh, what other questions that are common. People always ask. There you go. Very cool. Okay, Red. All right. Thank you. Hi, right, thanks, Dan Pedro. Okay, we're ready to rock out, and we have okay. a full house. Please remember, we have to get out of here at 7:55. Let's start yeah. out with Alec. Hey, Alec, how's it going? Hello. 
Hello. Hey. It's my very first project. I had this lighthouse, but without light. So now when I switch off the light with the photo cell, it begins to work and make the exact pattern as the original Minot Sledge Lighthouse. That's awesome. Next. That's a great first project. It does nothing, only makes the light more beautiful. Do you use a microcontroller, or is it? A yeah, yeah, the Trinket. Oh, Trinket. Oh, this is great. This is a great project. You've totally improved this, this art. Yeah. It's now interactive. OK, great. Do you have an idea for your second project? Probably, yes, with a bigger lighthouse, but I say nothing about it yet. OK. Uh, okay. Come back when you're ready to talk about it. Thanks for showing off your, your lighthouse. It's a, it's a great first project. Congratulations. Thank sure you. Email emails us for a sticker. Don't forget, uh, we'll send you a free ad seen on the Show and Tell sticker. Email support at adafruit.com. We'll ship you out a sticker. You can put it on your lighthouse. It'll look great. Or your second lighthouse. All right, next up. Thanks, Alec. Let's go to Seth. Hey, Seth. Hey, How's Seth? It going? hey I'm your mic, and show us what you got. Oh, we can't hear you. Uh-oh. Might be Maker Shrades. You might have to unclick the little red microphone No, he did button. that, I think. Yeah? I have a microphone. All right, well, tell you what, Seth, why don't you mess around with your microphone settings, and we'll just come back to you. Yeah, just yell when you uh, get Yeah, open. when we hear you, we know, we know you got it going on. All right, All right, thanks, Seth. We'll get back to you. OK, next up. Next up is Andrew. Andrew. Andrew, how's it going? Hello again. Hello. Hello. So I'm I'm doing a uh, talk about JavaScript and the Internet of Things and what devices are out there, and um, I'm just building a project now with the Esprino, and I bought the LED ultra white uh, matrix uh, from you guys, and there isn't any libraries for it, so I started building my own for it, and I've got it wired up with the Esprino now. And it's, as you can see, the smiley face is blinking. And just to prove that we can render new things, I've got a little button, and he's going happy and sad. All right. So uh, eventually I'll be um, doing the uh, ESP8266 and connecting it to the internet so you can have an internet-connected Tamagotchi. OK. Are you going to run JavaScript on the ESP8266? Or are you going to write that code in C? Yeah, so I'm just going to talk to Serial over it uh, with the oh. Esprina. So I've got the Esprina here, the, the, the Pika, and um, I bought the little breakout board that I can just, or the shim, sorry, to solder right. onto it. All right, sounds great. I do know that people are working on trying to get JavaScript poured into the ESP8266, but it's not quite done yet. So I was like, wow, like this advanced. All right, awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah cool. All right, thanks for the update. Don't forget, you get an F seen on the screen. Oh, yeah, Hold we're on. gonna we're gonna Hold be able Seth to go to Seth second. next. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. Okay, Seth. All right, Seth. We can hear you. You can. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we could. We could. Wait, you have to be close to the mic, maybe. I don't know. We heard you for a second. Okay. Well, you've got you've got a motor shield. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Um, yep, yeah. now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Okay. See, so, yeah, I'm doing a humanoid robot. I'm using two 16 channel motor shields. Okay. Two of these um, infrared distance sensors. Okay. And a three axis accelerometer. And then I just laser cut um, the pieces recently. So. This is it. Oh, wow. Transparent. It's missing a little over there right now, but it's around three feet tall and has 24 degrees of freedom. And then I'm also using these. There's 30 servos of that. That's a lot of servos. Yeah. All right. This is, a, this is actually a humanoid robot. Like a lot of people say they're a humanoid robot, but it's this big. You actually have one that's the size of a human. Yeah. Okay. Like it's All right. Well, I want to see updates, so please come by when you get more of it working and as it's starting to move. 
and it becomes your best friend. I want to, I want to check it out. And don't forget to email support it. If we're going to send you a sticker you can put on your humanoid robot. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, That's Seth. That's great work. Okay, next up. We have an up. army of humanoid robots. It's going good. All right. Okay. Richard, how's it going? Oh, looks yep. like you're... Can't hear you. Looks like... Can see you. Let's see. I'm always up for Maker Charades. Do you want us to hop over to okay. Aiden? And yeah, yeah. Just... Oh, now you're back. Oh, we're back. Okay. Um, so I've got uh, this uh, internet cloud uh, behind me that I've been working on uh, the last weekend. Uh, I've got it hooked up to um, the Adafruit I.O. Um, using the Huzzah um, to control the, the NeoPixels and also to interface with the sound effects board. Um, so I don't know if you can hear the birds chirping in the background there. Um, but uh, what it's going to do is it reads the feed from weather.com and then uh, we'll play one of these animations uh, here. Uh, I'll uh, switch it over to rain. So right now I just have it on my phone with the, the do buttons to change the different weather patterns. Uh, let's see if it'll change. So the light changed. i got to wait for the sound to, to end before it changes to the rain sound. So there's the rain sound, and then I have my personal favorite, which is the thunderstorm. So I'm going to switch it to that real quick. And uh, you'll hear the, the thunder. Uh, so what it's doing here, uh, I figured out how to attach the, um, the pin with the red light uh, to an analog pin so I can tell when one sound effect is over, and then I play the next one after that. Uh, it's got three different thunderclaps that it plays randomly. Um, and so that, that, that one's actually probably my favorite, the thunderstorm. So now I just have to build out the different lighting and uh, sounds uh, and probably do a little bit of work on the, the uh, server side to get those uh, RSS feeds translated over into the different mode selectors there. And I'm already starting to write an article on how to build uh, this basic one, and then I'm going to build a, a really super big one for a friend uh, who's offered me a bit of money to to get that for. This is a great cloud. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm kind of wondering what to call it. I'm thinking uh, something along the lines of the cloud connected cloud. I just like the idea of having the redundant cloud cloud type thing. You even have the generic cloud shape too. Yeah, this one, we just kind of, like, cut it out of acrylic at the last minute to have something nice. It, it's been hanging in the makerspace for a while. I have it tagged to GPS, so whenever I enter the neighborhood, it'll display the sunny day. So then they know if, it, if the sun's out and the bird's chirping, that means it's two minutes before I get to the makerspace. All right. Awesome project, of kind course. That's a, ni a nice entrance. <laughs> uh, of course, I'll send you to ask you on those shows. And... Yeah, no, this is very peaceful. Yeah. That's cool. You can hang up, hang it up above your bed. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Richard. I'm glad all this worked out this week. All the invites went out. All right. Um, we're gonna try to go to Michael Chen. Michael, you don't have a video camera up, but maybe turn on the camera and then Wait. your mic, yeah. and now you're materializing in. Hello. We see a human. Hi. Oh. Hey. Great. All right. Can you hear me? Show your project. Okay. Uh, I want to show you a 3D printed robot controlled by Adreno Mega. Oh wow! Whoa! It is, it is robot night. And it has um, seventeen degrees of freedom. Hold on a sec. Wow, that's like a robot robot. Like a robot. robot, yeah, this is serious. Okay. And it ha it also has um, Adafruit, uh, Bluefruit Easy Link upload, uh, for upload. That's what Bluefruit transforms into. Yeah. Not a lot of people know that. It actually <laughs> just transforms into that. What's interesting is you have stepper motors, not just servos in there. Uh, there are, I think, robotic servos. Uh, oh, I see. They just look like stepper. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I just I just uh, send it outside shell to make it look aluminum. Okay. Yeah. Let me put it on the floor to show you like a little bit of motion. Oh, wow. And so you control it with a controller, and that's what the Bluefruit does. Uh, yeah, it's controlled with a PS2 controller. Yeah. And the blue fruit just for upload when I need to. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, sure. You don't have to plug it in. Yeah. Whoa. 
<laughs> you haven't gotten the walking down like that smoothly That's yet. That's not bad. He's moonwalking. It's great. He's yeah, getting... the backward is it's just like moonwalking, and side steps is like a little bit of. Yeah. yeah well, how gets... long did this take to to do? Um, this bird because this is like the, the third generation, so drawing the three D file was like two two weeks. Yeah. But printing it was like the machine didn't stop for three weeks straight. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, you can do pu pu push-ups. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you can get up. Oh, and can do like so, so a left oh. and left right punch. This is pretty amazing because you had to go. You designed the bot, and then you had to write a bunch of software, and then there's all the things that mm -hmm. walking and getting up. So it's you're you're actually able yeah, to, to I, make I, all I of did it. It's a joint effort with me and my brother. And brother did all the OS pro the operation software on the Juno Mega, and I did all the hardware design and setup. Okay. All right. That's a pretty well, hardcore robot. Nice out, work. Outstanding. You get a as seen on the show and tell sticker email support at adafruit.com. I guess there's a new set of brothers on the 3D printing scene. Chens. Noah and Pedro. Just saying. Yeah, this is cool. That's cool that siblings like do stuff together. That's neat. All right. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Good work. Okay, you, you, Michael and Seth, you guys should become pen pals for your humanoid robots. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Next up. They can become friends. Speaking of robots, Aiden, how's it going? Good to see you. You have probably some soft robot stuff, I bet. Hi. Yes. Um. And continuing, I don't have a, a humanoid robot, but continuing on the theme of walking robots, I have my first walking soft robot. Okay. So um, a week or two ago, I showed off these little things, which were these tiny bending actuators I made. So I used those to make this little thing right here, which I call the crawly, and it's a tiny walking soft robot. So let me just demonstrate it real quick. OK, that's super uh, cute. As you can see, it's, <laughs> it's like pulling itself along yeah. and moving forward. Yeah. So um, it has two of those actuators. However, they both actuate at the same time, which leads into one of the really cool factors I think about this is that it only has one air input. Most like soft robots like the, or like most walking soft robots like the Glaucus, which you have on the learning system, uh, require like at least two inputs. This one literally only requires one. I can just power it from this one squeeze bulb right here. And, um, it's really simple to make. You make it in one casting step. This was the mold I made it in. As you can see, these are the little cores for the two actuators there. The pieces just fit on top of each other. You pour it through these uh, three holes, and then you can just remove it all in one casting step. So super simple. Yeah. Walking soft robot. That's really – and does it have to be two separated legs, or can it be one leg? Is there a reason that um, – yeah, so, so the reason it has two is because I originally intended, I, I originally thought that, like, I would only be able to do it with um, two air inputs. However, after I made it, I discovered I really didn't need two. I could just have one. However, I was too lazy to modify the mold. So I just right. left it as is. This is great. Yeah, this is Thank you. Cool. <laughs> it's really cute looking. All right, awesome. All right. You get a as, as seen on the show, as seen on the show and tell sticker to add to your collection. All right, excellent. Thank you. Okay, okay. this is like a all-star test. All right, and see Scott. Play us out. You got some screen share action going on. What do you got some photos of? Okay, can you hear me this week? Yeah. Yeah. You sound good. Yeah, yeah, good. Well, this is you know the power supply that does not suck, and I'm testing to make sure it does not in fact suck. So it works. It tunes up nicely. Plus minus 12 volts at 400 milliamps for rail. There's a little DC DC converter uh, here to give me five volts at one amp for uh, logic and whatnot. But anyway, back to me. Where's the stop screen sharing button at? It's hiding. Um, hmm. But um. I'm using Firefox this week because I couldn't quite figure out what. Uh, uh, yeah, you're a monolith right now. That's cool. You're just a, a bit black emptiness of space. But uh, uh, anyway, I wanted to show you some boards as soon as I figure out how to get the out. Of the, there's supposed to be a stop screen sharing button, and it's not showing it to me. Screen share. 
canceled. Am I back yet? No. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> give me 30 seconds. Otherwise, I'll have to show you the stuff next week. Um, All right. Do your thing. Let's look at some robots. Well, All right. Yeah. Meanwhile, we'll look at this beautiful lighthouse. Very peaceful. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the lighthouse. It's very nice. We can coordinate the lighthouse with some birds with Richard. There's a LEDs. Yeah. A walking robot. <laughs> a walking robot. <laughs> yeah. Someone asked me, how do you coordinate the show and tells? Because all these people have pro projects and everything. I'm like, we don't. Not really. It all kind of just comes together. This is an all-star cast. Yeah, you guys are all professional. Yeah, everyone, everyone's coming in with some, some great projects. Oh, wait, here, we, uh, we saw your, uh, we see a, a board layout. All right, we're back to you, C. Scott. C. Scott. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, I'm working on um, the, uh, oh, what are you doing? Oh, I see what it does. It, it works a little differently in, in Firefox, apparently. Yeah, but uh, you're, back to, you're back to just being a black square. Yeah. Well, I this thing annoys me. Uh, <laughs> eventually, I'll show up. Uh, pretend that you can see the board that this that outline it, it depicts. That's that's the third revision of the host board for the Crobx Euro unit. I'm hand building it. It's about halfway done. Uh, I finished the what I call Module B of the Chrominius Euro, which is two boards that sandwich together. I don't have the front panel for it yet, uh, um, but uh, it all checks out. I should be able to actually play that one next week in the studio. And then finally, I have my little 10 HP kit of boards where I have like the LFO, the MIDI CV unit, the envelope generator, the filter, etc. Uh, those are in various stages of assembly because when I get tired of working on one board, I just switch to another one. So, Good idea. Yeah. Uh, you have to do that if you're pushing five projects, otherwise you go nuts. But uh, anyway, uh, it's a pity this camera's not working, but um, I'll get out of your road. We'll catch, and, we'll catch uh, you next week for sure. I'll be in the studio where hopefully the uh, camera works. Okay. All good. All good. <laughs> to, to marathon. We're here for not, another eight not nine a sprint, years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. We stay anyway. the same. The technology gets better. Yeah, Maybe. No. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> see you guys next week. All okay. Right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank we you, do this everybody. every single week. We will see many of you next week. Don't forget, it's 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. Sorry, Eastern Time. Eastern and then Time, yeah. It's 8 p.m. for Ask an Engineer, which we're going to start in five minutes. All projects are welcome. Show and share your hackerspaces, makerspaces, ongoing projects, all and sorts of stuff. if you showed up your thing, don't forget to get a sticker. Email support at adfruit.com. Ask for your Ask on Show and Tell sticker. Wear it with pride. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, John Pedro. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Alec. Thank you, C. Scott. C. Scott is a Thank you, Andrew. Happy face, sad face. Happy face, sad face. All right. Bye, everybody. See you on See our stage here in a few minutes. <laughs>